Where do I look? Okay. The Silicon Valley collapse has rattled sectors like tech and banking, but those aren't the only industries feeling ripple effects of what transpired. 2% of the bank's loans as the end of 2022 were going to premium wine producers and vineyards. Joining us now is Alex Ryan, the chairman, CEO, and president of the Duckhorn Portfolio. Nice to see you, sir. You While you speak, I'm going to make sure I open this bottle and we can all share a glass together. How have you been impacted by the SVB collapse and how have you seen the industry impacted? We're not. We're not. We have no meaningful exposure there. Uh, does everyone ask those hard questions along the way? Um, they bank a lot of wineries, but it's a, it's a small, it's not as big as you might think, right? It's a big industry with a lot of good bankers and a lot of well well, well capitalized wineries. So I'm not looking at that as a major, major downturn in our industry, just a little hiccup along the way. Yeah, we spoke to Kevin O'Leary, oh. Mr. Wonderful of Shark Tank, mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. who has heavy exposure yeah. uh, to the wine industry, very involved yep. there. We got his take yeah. on SEB's impact. I want to play a quick clip and then get sure. your reaction. The wine industry is unique. It's been very, very, very successful in California. Some of the varietals we make, we're all proud of. But clearly our cost of capital, and I say this as a participant, is probably going to go up 30%, no question about it. It's going to make the larger operators probably more protected around a moat, and the smaller ones are gonna be acquired by the larger ones. It's gonna force consolidation in the wine industry. Do you think we could see some consolidation as a result? I think you're gonna see a little bit, not directly as a result of that. I think it's a broader uh, opportunity for uh, the wine industry it's getting a little more competitive out there, and they're going to be the have and the have not. You need to be well capitalized, and some of the banking points are, are valid, right? We need to run a good, tight banking system. More importantly, long term, I think you're going to see luxury brands that have authenticity and really reason to be in the market, and those that are kind of treading water a little bit. So that's where the divide I see is going to see over the, really in the premium wine industry for the next couple of years. They conduct SVB wine industry analysis in which they said the only growth they're seeing is over the age of 60. Are you seeing that at Duckhorn? And how do you get a young consumer to start yeah. drinking wine? That's a, that's a wild topic right now for the yeah. news. Uh, we're not seeing that in our data. We're seeing younger consumers uh, in our entry-level wine, the decoy we're sharing today right now, uh, come in, they still want to be a part of a wine lifestyle, right? The wine's been around since the Romans. It's not going anywhere. The category's not going anywhere. Young people are going to have to get in where they can afford to get in. They want part of that lifestyle. They want to be validated that their purchase is exciting, meets with their, their, their price point and their, their flavor expectations. Um, I've seen the same reports. Uh, there are, there's, a, there's a broad group of categories of age groups and I do believe the category is strong enough to continue to entice new, younger uh, consumers in as those older ones who are clearly buying a disproportionately amount, large amount of the share kind of move on. But I don't think we, we're going to see a massive disruption. Mm -hmm. It's what you deliver to those people. Those young people want to be validated that they're choosing good wine and you've given them everything they expect. If you do that, I think you got a good shot in the long term. It's oh. terrific, by the way. Well, it's thank very you very much. Good. Appreciate very good. Very good. We're all taking <laughs> sips while you're answering that <laughs> like question. It. Alex, what are you seeing in terms of the strength of the consumer? Any evidence that consumers yeah. are trading down with your brain given the fact that inflation still yeah. remains so sticky? It's, we're, it's the topic du jour, right? We're watching it, we're watching it closely in our tasting rooms, with our trade partners, with our distributors. What we're seeing, and I can't really speak for everyone, what we're seeing is we're not seeing any trade down right now. Actually, we're seeing this is an interesting bottling right here, the one you chose. We're trading them up the price point. This is about $5 more than our, our, our more traditional decoy. So we're starting to see some opportunities to trade up. I don't think that's true for everyone, but um, right now we're not seeing people leave our portfolio. But more importantly, we're not seeing people in mass leave luxury. Luxury, you know, in our business defined as $15 and up. We kind of cluster in that $20 to $200 range. We're not seeing people leave the category, and that's really, really exciting. The other industry um, trend that SVP is seeing is direct-to-consumer. Yeah. What are you guys seeing in that capacity? It's our best form of marketing. It's our, it's our, most, it's our stickiest sale. It's our, we're getting closest to our customer. We've been big in that since we first initiated in 1980, back when my predecessor, the founder of the company, Dan Duckhorn, got it going. And it is now exploded. It's the way you want to talk to your customers. It's a big, t it's going to continue and continue to grow. And we're going to put some more marketing dollars behind it to make sure that we're touching the consumers wherever they want to find our wines. Yeah, you certainly have seen massive growth there. Before we let you go, we got to get your take. You are the expert here. Your favorite. What would you say? You, you, I, know, I know it's hard. It's like picking <laughs> a favorite child probably for you. Yeah. You got to give us some tips. In your favorite child, the answer is typically, well, it depends. <laughs> and uh, right now, um, 
Uh, actually, it's funny, you, oddly enough, you opened uh, our decoy limited wine, the, the upscale decoy pro uh, product is exceeding our expectations of market. We released it a couple years ago. It's doing better than we thought. That's getting our, us exciting. We're starting to come up with some new bottlings within the decoy limited. Today, with you guys, it's my favorite. Tomorrow might be a duck there one, so we go. Blanc. Safe we, answer. <laughs> before you go, there's been a lot of focus on the climate, yep. in particular in yep. California, the massive snowfalls that you're yep. seeing. What has been the impact on your business, on your We're vineyard? a Mediterranean climate. We need water. We all know that. Great. The rains have been wonderful. They're replenishing the soil, the, the reservoirs. People are getting the water they need. It's good for the economy of California. It's great for wine business. The vines are asleep, so you're not going to affect anything. We've had a couple of down trees and a couple of hiccups. The reality is California's dependent on winter rains. We need those. We've had a couple of tough years, so it's all good. It's good to a two, 2023 harvest, a lot of crop, good quality. No and downside. It's good to the, immaterial. Wow. Immaterial. Immaterial. It's exciting to get water back, and we're going to grow. We're going to make better wine because of it. Remarkable. Yeah, cheers, cheers to you. Thanks, cheers, guys. guys. Alex Ryan, great to have you here. We very much appreciate that.